Hello scholars, today we'll be learning the next chapter in economics which is central banking. In this module, let us understand the meaning and definition of central bank. Students, our national bank, the Reserve Bank of India, was established way back in 1935. It was established during the Britishers rule. It was a private bank. Being a private bank, it lent funds to big industrialists and a light section of the society. Agriculture, which was the main occupation of the country, was continuously starved of funds. It was for this reason that the government took over the ownership and control of RBI on the 1st of January 1949. Students, let us understand the meaning of central bank in detail. Central bank is a supreme monetary institution at the apex of the monetary and banking structure of a country. It is the leader of the money market. Now, what do you mean by money market? Money market is a market for short-term instruments like treasury bills, commercial bills, etc. Students, the RBI or the central bank controls, regulates and supervises the activities of commercial banks. It is the leader of money market as such controls, regulates and supervises the activities of commercial banks. Mr. Raghuram Rajan is the present RBI governor of our country. Students, De Kock defined central bank as a bank which constitutes the apex of the monetary and the banking structure of the country. In this module, we will learn about another cause of the Second World War and that is the policy of appeasement. Dear students, the word appease literally means to pacify or to please. It was this time when the world economies were groaning under the destruction of the First World War and countries like Britain and France who were leaders of League of Nations were busy solving their own economic problems. Hence, they did not want a second world war at any cost. From May 1937 to September 1939, when the World War II broke out, the policy of appeasement was given shape by British Premier or Prime Minister Nivelle Chamberlain. This policy means acceding to hostile demands in order to gain peace. Policy of conciliating with an aggressive power at the cost of some other country is what appeasement means. Acceptance to undue threatening demands of Germany in order to avoid war is what England and France were doing. Rather than taking a strict action against the German dictator Adolf Hitler, they allowed Hitler to grow. That is why Hitler openly flouted the clauses of Treaty of Versailles. There are two main reasons as to why Britain and France followed a policy of appeasement towards Hitler. First, they believed that the Treaty of Versailles had been too severe for the defeated powers, especially Germany. Second, they thought that if genuine grievances of Germany were removed, she would be satisfied and would do nothing to disturb the peace of the world. They also felt that the strength of Hitler and Mussolini lay in their ability to exploit the national grievances in their respective countries. Once these grievances are removed, the two dictators would lose their appeals and 
their power could be reduced. Therefore, they agreed to transfer the Sudeten land to Germany at the Munich conference which was held in 1938. Dear students, they also did nothing when Germany began to rearm in complete violation of the terms of Treaty of Versailles. Britain and France were mistaken in their assessments when they gave reasonable concessions to Germany. In actuality, Hitler was taking an advantage of the modesty that was shown towards him. Hitler's demands grew shockingly excessive, aiming at European mastery if not world conquest. The policy of appeasement greatly emboldened Germany, Italy and Japan who plunged the world into another destructive war. England and France followed this policy with yet another intention. They followed this policy towards dictators to create a bulwark against Soviet Union and check the rising tide of communism. Dear students, this is to be understood that Hitler was a staunch anti-communist whereas Joseph Stalin was a hard-lined communist leader of Soviet Russia. England and France had anticipated that if these two dictators fight against each other, they would be mutually destroyed and hence in order to stop communism in this world, they felt that they should empower Adolf Hitler. Britain, France, the leaders of League of Nations had appeased dictators like Germany, Italy and Japan in order to prevent the growth of communist USSR in Europe and communist China in Asia. They had allowed the dictators to rearm because these dictators had signed an anti comintern pact called as the Berlin-Rome-Tokyo Axis. Dear students, it is this Berlin-Rome-Tokyo Axis which led to a Second World War and hence the anticipations of Britain and France were proved wrong.